and we shall try out Deliver Us the Moon. Well, we shall begin it anyway. Only downside of Xbox is loading times. However, it will run some of these games better than my PC will. There was a time when resources seemed endless. But in 2030, the great energy crisis began. You guys hear this With all right? hardly any resources left on our world, Global Powers created the World Space Agency to look beyond the Earth for answers. The answer was found in Helium-3, a powerful isotope discovered in abundance on the Moon. With it, humanity could satisfy its energy demand for decades to come. And so, in 2032, Mankind colonized the moon. Spearheaded by the Lunar Council, the WSA constructed several permanent settlements to harvest and process helium-3. The resulting energy was transferred to Earth through a revolutionary energy network, the Microwave Power Transmission, or MPT. For a time, all seemed well. Then, one fateful night in 2054, the lights went out. No energy. Oop. The MPT had gone offline, and communication with the lunar colonists was lost. Without earthly resources to launch a full-scale rescue mission to the moon, the World I Space Agency shut down off. permanently in 2055. I will wait until I But a small scene. group of former WSA colonists refused to accept humanity's bleak future. Determined to discover the colony's fate and to restore the MPT, they've been preparing their mission in an abandoned desert launch facility. Now, in 2059, they are ready to launch an astronaut to the moon. What awaits is unknown and unforeseeable, but the mission is clear. Deliver us the moon. <gasps> they said the game name. Right, I will be back a second just while I turn off all these notifications. I'm um, back again. So, make sure we've got subtitles and stuff on. We do. Controls. No inversion because I'm not a weirdo. Yeah, I did boot it up earlier to make sure it actually works properly. MPT online. Friends and family of the missing lunar colonists gather all around the world tonight in remembrance of the 2054 MPT blackout resulted in a global power outage and the loss of contact with the lunar colony. 
The blackout caused global turmoil, which ultimately led to the closure of the World Space Agency one year later. In other news, the recent formation of the largest dust storm on record has prompted climatologists to readjust their forecast of the equatorial desert's growth rate. As a result of the new storm, the desert could soon cover 30% of the globe's landmass. Wow. Several governments have pledged support for refugees despite reports of resource shortages. The dust storm is expected to hit residential zones between the northern 49th and 50th latitude lines by late afternoon. Uh, we're in control. And over the right. World Space Agency's former MPC ground station in the Atlas Desert. Authorities have imposed a mandatory evacuation. See what we've got in here. For countries north of the equatorial. Boxes desert, of stuff. This was Nicole Cage from book. World what book is this? September 16, 2059. Wishing you a safe and happy day. Tales from the Lost Lands. <gasps> Own man. Is this a comic? A brave astronaut ventures to the moon. His mission to explore the lunar expanse and uncover its mysteries. While the road is desolate and the hardships many, he knows he must persevere to save mankind. This looks like a comic. We're basically in like a little compartment pod. What have we got here? Launch sequence, command module blueprint. Oh, this is how to launch the rocket. One is the ground launch sequencer. Orbital access arm. Power units. Oxygen event, sound suppression, hydrogen, ignition, cut off, separation. Done it a thousand times before, before during our simulations. We know you can do this. Good luck, Claire. I oh, we can toggle the radio. Katrina, are you there? Somebody asking for us. What else is around here? For humanity, for the future. Fossil fuel depletion worse than we thought. Energy crisis unavoidable. Have they actually written out articles for this? They have as well. Global energy resources were worn out far sooner than pre previously predicted. According to a report released today by the World Space Agency. Mission to find new energy sources. Yeah. So microwave power transmits power from moon to the earth. Microwave power transmission generates power inside a fusion reactor and sends it wirelessly to receivers on earth fueled by helium-3 harvested on the moon. While the MPT took over a decade to complete, the energy signal travelled rapidly from the lunar colony to Earth. The World Space Agency believes that the MPT can transmit enough energy for the colony's fusion reactor to supply approximately 20% of the Earth's population. That percentage is expected to rise quickly. In another decade, the MPT could power all of Earth, said Dr. Isaac Johansson, or Johansson. The agency's lead scientist, Earth will never be in the dark again. Lunar colony disaster. Hygens or Hugens cryo sleep malfunction. That doesn't sound good. Celebrates hot. MPT disaster. Colony goes dark. Research facility to remain closed. Yeah. So it's like something screwed up while they were up there. Right, let's see what this is. It's our spacesuit. Nice. Ground control to Fortuna One, this is Claire. Please confirm radio contact. Hi, Claire. Radio contact confirmed. Make your way to the launch platform and prime the rocket for liftoff. 
We have to launch before the dust storm hits. So enter the Fezenkov launch facility, equip the astronaut suits. It's all we have at the moment. So we've got the astronaut suit on. Let's have a look outside, shall we? Cosmodrome! There she is, the Taurus 5. It took us four years to get her ready for launch. But you need to hurry. The dust storm will hit this area in a few hours. If we don't succeed now, the Fortuna mission will be over for good. So we've got to jump. Got some sort of scanner as well. Network dish. Clears it by Isaac Johnson, the MPT transmitted power from the moon to the Earth through a network of satellite dishes. Since Isaac's disappearance during the 2054 blackout, Claire Johansson, I'm going to say Johansson, I studied our father's work closely in preparation for the Fortuna mission. So, so far I've got a comm device, a flashlight, an astro tool and the oculus. Ah, so the oculus is our scanner. Bin bags. This is Deliver Us the Moon Wayne. It's like World of Warcraft but without the killing stuff. We've got a sprint. Sort of campfire. Mandatory red explosive barrels in here. More World Space Agency stuff. Oh, look at the kids' drawings. They're almost as bad as Wayne's. Moon Bear. 2002 A Space Voyage. Oh, I forgot here. MPT end to the age of wires. Imagine a world free of fossil fuels and pollution. All of our energy needs satisfied in the blink of an eye. A system that can wildly transmit energy all over the world and beyond. This is the MPT, the microwave power transmission. In this book, MPT inventor Isaac Johansson discusses what the future might hold. Isaac and Elizabeth are now proud to announce the arrival of Claire's little sister, Kathy Christie Johansson. Oh, look at the drawings. With a possibly dead mummy. <gasps> look, Wayne, actual dong. Scanny thing. Elizabeth kept the Johansson family together after her husband Isaac assumed a role in the Lunar Council. After her death, Claire took care of her sister Kathy before she was taken to the moon to live with Isaac. Both Isaac and Kathy have not been seen since the blackout. So they've disappeared. Got a microwave. Photos. Miami. Paris. I actually recognise that view of Paris from uh, Bioshock of all things. <gasps> Look, teddy bear. There's our mum stuff. Five lessons to make you a perfect parent by Priscilla Flowers. Right, what else have we got? Some Cyrillic characters that I cannot read, and also like Sputnik. It is Sputnik Monument. Monument marks the entrance to the Fezenkov Cosmodrome. The facility was abandoned until the Fortuna team made it their base of operations after the blackout 
and began preparations for humanity's last mission to space. The sign reads, To the Stars. There we go, you've all learnt something. That is Russian for To the Stars. Booker knows how to say it. What are you? <gasps> it's a tiny rocket. Get going. Oh yeah, there's a ladder. Looks like we're taking the ladder instead. Warning, high voltage. Oh, because that looks really safe. This is going to be fun. They've put a lot of detail into it. Like even having titles and stuff on the box and blurbs. It's been five years since we last received a microwave power transmission from the lunar colony. At first, no one believed it would be possible to transmit energy from the moon back to Earth. But the WSA proved the skeptics wrong. Just like you will when you get the MPT back online. So that's the big dish they use to receive power from the moon. And there's all the solar stuff they've been using since. It does look quite good, this game. Right, Let's see what's in here. <gasps> Automatic doors. All the lights are off. What's that thing? MPT network powering our future. Not at the moment it's not. What are you? Power's out. Use code 3548 for the door. Thank you. Gain access to launch facility. Wait, if power's out, why does this control pad still work? Or does it have like an internal battery or something? Open the windows. automatic door. Maintenance saves lives. The MPT is keeping our families alive. Do not let it go offline. Every day we work for the safety of our loved ones. This building once functioned as part of the WSA, but it's been our home for many years now. I still can't believe you'll be leaving here for good soon. The desertification of this whole region won't take long after the storm passes through. Yeah, they're nasty, those storms. Right, I learned about them when I was at uni, and there's a thing called... You've probably heard of it, called the Coriolis Force. Space Tech Magazine. What happened to the MPT year after Blackout? Yeah. Blackout. In this edition, we invite world-renowned scientists to discuss what could have caused the MPT to remain offline. What might have happened to the lunar colonists and how humanity should move forwards. Yeah, so these massive storms you get, um, we had them. We learnt about them at uni 
and they call them Coriolis storms. So if you get a large enough desert area, somewhere like somewhere massive like the Sahara, the wind can blow across a massive area. And because it's open enough, the actual rotation of the earth can cause winds to blow and they can go stupid fast. They can whip up dust into the atmosphere. Oh, a little badge. In memoriam. I'm going to say Hugens. Hugens malfunction. So during the Hugens malfunction, we had comms with Earth. The black hair is different. How does the whole colony go silent? What happened up there? So yeah, those. See how the Earth spins there. It spins fast enough in a large enough open area. It can actually create winds, and they whip up dust and all sorts into the atmosphere. Which is why sometimes in the UK, if you are. Uh, have dust and stuff on your car in the morning that's actually dust from places like the Sahara they just get blown all over so there's the MPT network so we've got Earth and the Moon that looks like some sort of beaming dish it hits the side also there's a reactor that runs it it beams it through the dishes and the dish beams it to Earth it looks like. There's someone's office. There's Fortuna. Oh, scanny thing, it's that ball thing that person was holding earlier. Or half of one. Maria's broken ASE unit. There we go. So one of the few survivors of the 2048 Hugens cryosleep malfunction. Maria brought her damaged ASE unit back to Earth with her. She had been trying to repair her ASE unit in hopes of restoring holographic recordings captured by the device during her time at the Hugens research facility. Yeah. So she's trying to work out what happened. Alright, so they're in order. So, dear Sarah, we met years ago on the Pearson Space Station. I was relieved from service after Hugens cryosleep malfunction. Remember how we talked about my broken ASC? I'm looking for a way to extract its holographic data and hoping you can help me out. Hi, Maria. Yeah, I remember. Holographic data runs through a unique hardware component. I specialise more in software, so you should reach out to my colleague Rolf Robertson here at Pearson. He's an excellent mechanic. So, she's basically trying to rip the hard drive out of it. here fluoxetine antidepressants 100 pills I've never heard of those and we've got in memoriam for the Hugens don't forget everyone we lost so it looks like the Hugens thing was a big deal a very big deal yeah they've kept the research facility closed and everything So we're in maintenance. It's like modular flooring as well. That's a rocket. Yeah, rocket exhaust. You're just full of storage stuff. So where do I go? Is this like a lift or something? No. Unless I can bring it down. Can't do anything with these shutters. Door there. I can move the ladders. You can go over here. Control centre and crew quarters. So you're the stairs up. Lockers. Go 
good old fashioned pump truck. Nice to know in like 2054 that a pump truck is still the best thing they've got to use to move around pallets. Nobody's invented anything better. What do you mean, Sherry? Hey, look, it's like a canteen. Yeah. Not bad. Lots of empty bottles. Is that an evacuation notice? Can I zoom in and read it? Please proceed outside the Fasenkov Cosmodrome facility between September the 15th and 16th. Everyone in and around the facility must be ready outside the building at 0500 at the Rendezvous Maria. Oh yeah, there's more there that are easier to read. So they evacuated the place. Tudor 1 is a go. So it looks like they gave up. What's that? Claire's office? So that's the evacuation thing. Oh, it's a sound file. You've isolated three plausible causes for the MPT blackout. One, the transmitter at Pearson Space Station. Claire, there you are. Come on, we're celebrating in the other room. Everyone is looking for you. I need to go over this one last time, Maria. Oh, We've nice, it still it plays. Before, multiple times. We're good. Come, it's time to join the party. It won't take long. I'll be right there. A true Johansson. Once he set his mind to something, I could never convince him either. You are just as stubborn as your father. <laughs> Probably the only thing we have in common. I, I just don't understand why he didn't restore the MPT connection. He invented the damn thing. And now it's just us. No one else is even trying. If we fail... Remember what I told you. If it can be done, then we're going to do it. That's all we have to focus on. Go over your notes. Join us when you're ready. All right. Blackout. Well, these are rocket components. So there's the module, fuel, rocket booster. I'm assuming that's the model of the rocket itself. Yeah. Recruited straight out of university, Claire Johansson designed the Taurus 5 rocket for the Fortuna mission. Claire was eager to join the team to uncover the fate of her father and sister on the moon after the 2054 blackout. So, the objective for now is to get to the moon and find out why they stopped transmitting power to Earth. Because it screwed everything over. Custody denied. Court rules that the father, Isaac Johansson, as a next of kin, has been granted full kiss custody or the Kathy Christina Johansson after the mother of Elizabeth Johansson on timely death. As her current garden you are ordained to assure Kathy's brought safe passage to the moon to be reunited with her father. Yeah at the moment we're making our way up to the rocket. I'm just looking at stuff on the way there to find out what's going on. So it looks like the person that we're playing as It looks like her dad and her sister went to the moon and all contact has been lost with the moon since the power shut off. So nobody has any idea what happened up there. We're being sent up to investigate. And the person we're playing as wants to go because she wants to find out what happened to her dad and her sister as well. And she tried to get custody of her sister but was denied so her sister got sent to the moon to be with dad the control center is located on the top floor of the facility the dust storm is approaching fast let's go you're in the control center get the rocket ready to launch as fast as possible initiate power reboot let's do it 
calculating new storm ETA. Claire, we have a problem. The storm is approaching faster than expected. Way faster. Time's running out. Keep going, Fortuna. We've been working too long to give up now. Is it speed run time? Clothe boast fuel bag. Right, so we need to close these fuel valves. What are you? That doesn't look like it worked. Right, let's go outside and look at these valves. Fire exit. And we're outside again. Yeah, it's getting dustier as well, that storm's coming in. Oh, that's the lift we saw earlier. So. There's one valve. That's one valve off. this lift shall we anyway we can pick these stairs up no I'm assuming it's this way then oh we're back down here let's rub these stairs Puzzle solved. Yeah, it's less floating. It's like they're, um, it feels more like they're sliding, like they're on ice or something. The hydrogen valves are closed. Head back inside the control center. Like, there is a little bit of resistance as you do it. But it feels more like they're sliding on ice or something like that. Right, let's go back this way. Right, now do I turn this thing? Cutscene! Storm's definitely coming in though. That's it. The rocket is primed. You have to launch now before the dust storm destroys the rocket and everything we've worked <clears> for. <throat> oh no, we're on a timer. And I went the wrong way. Run! doing calm down look I'm in the rocket
navigation systems online. We're nearly there. It's just like your training. You can do this. Initiate launch procedure. Um. Well, it's lit up for me. So, oh no, it's here. Your switch those slips. One, two, three. Ground launch sequencer started. And then it's this thing. Orbital access arm retracting. Be a little more careful. Oh, it's on a timer thing. Perfect, just like we've practiced. Yeah. So three is these, and I need to do. So you need to be switched, and you don't switched. Why would you design it like that? Although I do suppose this is supposed to be a cobbled together piece of junk. Three, four is the next one of these. Gaseous oxygen vent arm retracting. Vent arm safely in place. Five is. This thing. So you both need to be down and then there. Hydrogen burn-off system activated. Rocket boosters ready for ignition. Seven is Seven another lever. There. Rocket boosters ignition start. Engines ready in five, four. Two, start, one. We have liftoff! Yeah, I'm going to the moon. Oh, this is pretty cool. Is it going to do a full arm sequence? Camera rock. It is. We're above cloud level. The rocket has entered the thermosphere. You're on your way, but you know one. Oh, this is pretty awesome. Like giving us a proper So main engine cuts off stage separation, second stage ignition. Is there something I need to press? Or is it doing it for me? Oh look, circling the Earth. It was breathtaking when the first astronauts made their way to the moon just a hundred years ago. They knew an Earth full of life. Yeah, Earth is fox. today is dust. If you can bring the MPT network back online, it could restore the hope humanity lost after the lunar colony fell. We could recover, rebuild, and most of all, that's Start a big storm. thinking about a future. You'll need to find the MPT transmitter at the Pearson space station. From there, the power signal was relayed to Earth. This was the final link in the MPT network before the blackout. If there are answers to find, they're at Pearson, clear. We need to head down to the shelter. These winds are getting bad. Understood. For Tuna One, this storm is going to jam radio contact. You'll be on your own for a while. Typical. <gasps> they said the name of the game again. Complete the second stage of the launch sequence. Cut off main engine, which is this. I'm just going to have a look at the, the Earth a couple of seconds longer. 
Yeah, you can see all the orange in the clouds is probably dust in the atmosphere. That would cause the desertification, or desertification, how do you, however you want to say it. Ignite second stage thruster, which is you. Completed, ready for ignition. Why are you floating so close? That's a bit of a chunky cutscene, but... There is title sequence. Guessing that's the big space station thing, like the transmitter. Objective. Oh, it's a space station. Oh, are we gonna actually have to do the guide it in thing? We are. So B is moved down. A is move up. And then just guide it in. Come on. Perfect. All those in-flight refuels on Ace Combat have done me well. Zero G. But we can detect fluctuations in the MPT network. If you can hear this, when you reach the control center, try to find out what's wrong with the MPT connection so you can bring it back online. Good luck on that. Alright, this is pretty cool. Like proper zero G movement. Hey look. We have a look at the view. So that's the big transmitter thing. One of Isaac Johansson's greatest achievements, the MPT transmitter directed. The energy signal sent from the moon to Earth from 2041 until the blackout in 2054. As construction continued and Isaac's responsibilities within WSA grew, the distance between him and his family began to take its toll. That's a pretty cool view. Right. You're closed.
like this zero g movement actually feels pretty good like it's got the proper amount of resistance and stuff to it Oop. so we need oxygen bring life support back online right, tell you what though Yeah, it's going to take a bit of getting used to for this. What are you? You look like a battery of some sort. You're just floating bits. Your uh, battery goes in there. And we have an oxygen canister. So I'm guessing we need to find more batteries. Not enough power. Right. Yeah, we need more batteries. Hey, look, a battery. Yeah, this orientation is going to take a little bit of getting used to. From Sean Robotics. Right, can we do it with one or do we need both? Yeah, we need both. And your Yeah, if I take you out of there, the door's gonna close again, aren't you? Is there anything else over this way? No. But I can open this locker, and it has more oxygen in it. Eh. Oh look, there's plenty of oxygen there. Right, so... Two Copernicus Moon Hub ASE parts. Internal mail. So the ASE was that little ball thing she said was like a. Like it had holograms on it or something. That beat was down. So we need to get over there. So I'm thinking. I've just had an idea. Maybe this battery. Can I get you out again? I can. If I pull you out of there. Can I then grab this battery? Yes, I can. Put you in there. up your silly phone and then put this one in here now reboot the system we life support systems on that oxygen levels rising <sighs> Do I want to become famous? Let's say no for now. <gasps> yeah, but Brina's doing mod work for me, so...
Where do I go from here? Right, I've rebooted the the supply. Eh. Your storage. Can't take these out anymore. Oh, it opened a way down. Yeah, so it's going to be fully 3D movement in these things. We and we have another sound file to listen to. Expedition team, do you copy? Copy control. We're all set. Ready for descent. The MPT network is still down, so expect the lights to go out as you descend towards Copernicus. Thanks for the heads up, Pearson. Remember, Sarah, our oxygen here in the station is limited. After arriving, you'll have 40 minutes to find out what caused the blackout and bring our MPT network back online. If you're not back by then, we'll have to evacuate without you. We hear you, Control. Rolf, you ready? I am. And don't worry, Control. It's probably just a glitch. We'll be back before you know it. Let's find out how they've been holding up down there. Alex, commence descent protocol. All systems go. Um, don't actually know, Brina. It's not tagged as horror, but it's pretty spooky so far. All we know is that they invented a new thing to beam power from the moon to Earth, and it just stopped, and nobody knows why. This zero G movement is taking some getting used to. Oh, that closed the window. No, I wanted to have a look. It's a space elevator. Like a proper space elevator. So that thing will go all the way down to the surface. So, the only way forward is this way. So these are like different docking stations or something. Sleeping quarters and another audio file. Grab this audio file. There you go, buddy. Almost there. We'll touch up your paint job later, don't worry. Are you ready to go? We've almost got the elevator running again. Yeah, just patching up Alex before we head down. Are you bringing that thing along? Of course. We'll need all the help we can get. Besides, you wouldn't have made it to that airlock if it hadn't been for him. <sighs> this MPT blackout can't be just a glitch, Rolf. Everything is still dark down there. Last time there was an outage. <sighs> did you hear the message from Earth? No. What did they say? They can't even send ships up here anymore without the MPT. It's crazy, right? We're the only ones able to investigate the blackout. Rolf, Sarah? We need to get you guys down to the surface ASAP. We don't have much time. <sighs> okay, let's go. Yeah. 
So. Sounds like they sent people down from this station to investigate then. And they also didn't hear from them. A look, a telescope. Pointed at Earth. <gasps> More Moon Man comics. Moon Man first contact. The astronaut docks into a rundown space station on his way to the moon. In it, he discovers the clues of an old friend. Convinced that they may still be alive on the moon, he doubles his effort to reactivate the space elevator in a race against time. What book is this? Ah, uh, it's not working. Ah, bugger it. Scannable thing. Cryosleep machinery. Ah, that's the thing that re malfunctioned on the Hugens and they were looking for. Hi, Abby. So, after the cryosleep generator in the Hugens research facility man malfunctioned in 2048, Maria's search for answers led her to investigate what remained of the machine. Unable to determine the exact cause of the malfunction, she sent this fragment to Pearson space station mechanic Rolf Robertson for assessment. So he was investigating it. Dear Mr. Robertson, I'm one of the few survivors of the Hugens cryosleep malfunction. I've recently come across a fragment recovered from the cryo generator and was hoping you could inspect it. Also, is there any way I can get my AAC to project holographic data from that day? I want to find out what really happened at the Hugens. Dear Ms. Gonzalez, I've inspected the generator fragment you sent over, but I can't find anything conclusive. As for the holographic data, it is unfor unfortunately location based. Holograms can only be projected where they occurred. If the Lunar Council ever clears access to the Hugens again, I think the best thing to do is bring your ASC and check the holographic data that's there. Rolf Robertson, Pearson Station Mechanic. Ah, so to view the holographic things she was looking for, we need to actually go back to the Hugens. Mind they've changed the code again, new code is 2539. Hi Abby. Yeah, I finished the playthrough of carrying that I was doing. So I have now moved on to this game which is Deliver Us the Moon. We are well we are trying to find out there was a reactor on the moon that sent us power. And it turned off one day, so Earth no longer has any power. And they've not had any contact from the moon whatsoever on Y. So we've been sent to investigate. And everything is zero G at the moment. So, like, moving all over the place. Right, so... MPT network offline. Diagnose. Pearson Space Station MT transmitter and receiver online. Connection to MPT network not established. So that tells me that the moon isn't broadcasting. No connection with moon hub. Space availability offline. Additional energy required. Rotate station for additional power. Station rotation engine offline. So we need to rotate the station somehow. We got here. More maintenance posters. View of the moon and the space elevator.
More notes. Council Member MacArthur. In the past few months, my team and I have encountered problems with construction material shipments. We were supposed to be finished with the Orion Ring by now, but we've missed our milestone due to shipments being repeatedly cancelled. When can we expect the Lunar Council to approve further shipments? Sarah Baker, Pearson Station Liege Engineer. Engineer Baker, the, Le the Lunar Council has decided to shift resource priorities around because of a new construction on the moon. For the time being, I recommend you make do with what you have. We all do down here. So a new construction is the Huygens facility finally being repaired. It's about time that place opened up again. There's too much knowledge being buried there since the cryosleep malfunction. Sarah Baker. Suffice it to say, when the construction project is classified, it does not concern Hugens. Access to the Hugens research facility remains restricted until further notice. So they were building something which took away resources from this station for some reason. Evacuation procedure. Travel to Moon Hob. Full elevator lockdown. You have plus or minus one hour before departure. Please leave your possessions behind. Travel to space station. Full elevator lockdown. Yes, same. Nothing on there. Eh. I'm still getting stuck on this floaty thing. Space tech. Reflections of the Hugens choir sleep malfunction. Chips. More maintenance stuff. ASE, that's the little robot thing. That looks like that's where the spacesuits were. And they're all gone. Oh no. Most of them are gone. Right, what's well, this way? We have an airlock. <gasps> we have an arm. It's a laser cutter. Bet that sort of knocked that out, hasn't it? <gasps> Plasma cutter can be safely removed from the servo arm and attach to the socket on the right hand glove. Gimme. Laser hand. That's exactly what this game needs. Oh, so we're actually outside. More oxygen there. All the little glowy bits that can cut. Ground control to Fortuna One. We're still not reading anything from the MPT. Is everything under control up there? I've played a little bit of Astronia.
But I tried it out for a bit because it was on the Xbox Game Pass thing, so I just wanted to see what it was like. More audio logs. Copy that. Do you think we'll finish construction anytime soon? Was the council claiming more supplies each week? I doubt it. I'm surprised we got this past MacArthur in the first place. <laughs> yeah. Hey, listen, I'm getting strange readings here from the lunar surface. Are you seeing anything? Just wrapping up. What the hell? All the lights are shutting down. Are you alright, Wolf? What just happened? I can't see a thing. Everything is dark out here. We lost power from the MPT. The whole station is down. Can you find your way back to the airlock? Negative. I don't have a visual. Right. I'm sending Alex to block the airlock doors. Do you see him? I see his flashlight. Heading back to the airlock. What's going on? Everything on the surface is dark. Wolf, not now. What's your ETA? Ten seconds. Make it faster. Once the airlock seals, you'll be locked out. Alex is blocking the door for you, but he can't hold it much longer. Yeah, Breathe Edge I've not even heard of. What's this? Orion wing plate. So, though operational, the Pearson Space Station was never completed. Sarah and Rolf oversaw construction of the final wing until Lunar Council member MacArthur suspended shipments of material. Such as this panel diverting all researchers to a classified project on the moon. So they were getting up to something dodgy on the moon and redirecting supplies that were supposed to go to the space station to the moon to do it. I wonder what they were up to. What version of Sims have you been playing, Abby? I think the last one I played was Sims 4, I think it was. That doesn't look good. Sims 4, the most recent one then, have they just been adding to it? I think most of our sims have better lives than we do. Apart from that one guy I trapped in his basement just churning out paintings. Let me in. Through a window or something. Ah, a breaker. turned off. Can I go this way now? Yeah I did make a... because I wanted to play it without using any money cheats or anything like that so I made one house where I had a guy trapped in a basement just churning out paintings getting better and better at doing it till his paintings were worth loads and I just kept selling them and selling them so he lived in his basement and churned out paintings and did nothing else. This looks like liquid. Is it water or something? 
Yeah, that's what water looks like. Bloop. All the rest of my sims had a good life, just not that one. Provide power to the station rotation engine. So, uh, we need more batteries. You look like fission material. It's kind of what plutonium looks like. Not plutonium, uranium. <laughs> just had a superhero and a supervillain like just sharing the same place right so ah we're going to have to scavenge batteries that we need to use are all of these and see if there's a way through. Oh yeah there is. Over the top. Steal this battery. Oh we're going to turn life support off to turn the rotation thing on aren't we? Yeah. And now we move this one. Right, how are we going to get through here? It looks like we might just be going through this middle bit. Um, let's see. going through this middle bit and not get electrocuted. I'm going to get zapped, I know I am. Made it. this battery out and they turn off oh that's miles easier and then we turn this wheel and I'm expecting this one to be stupid zap these things first Made it. Just. Life support, energy supply, critical. Yeah, so we're turning off the light support to turn this rotation thingy on. Rotation engine is on. Power fully redirected from life support to rotation engine. Access control center to activate engine. Life support failure. So I have to go this way. Life 
Life support shutting down. Oxygen reserves low. What's that? Here. So I need to go back to the control room which was... I forget where. Is it through this bit? It was, wasn't it? It was through this bit and then... is past their bedrooms and stuff. There we go, control set. Quick, turn the thingy on. Activate rotation engine. Rotation engine activated. Space elevator online. This is going to be artificial crap. Oop, that's no good. We broke it. Ow. Grab it. Nope. Grab it or you're fucked. There. Oh no. Oh, there's another one there. <laughs> this isn't good. We appear to have broken the plate, the space station as well. Right, which way, which way? There. Is that another oxygen bit? No, it's just a light. Come on. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on. Yeah, just about. <sighs> Some spares. No, no. Bastard. Can I zap this all? to go give me the oxygen thingy Open. No, let me in. Get in the elevator. Elevator is online. Just get in and go. Push the button. And now we actually go to the moon. pretty close.
think this is a save point as well, or it should be. On the moon, in the moon hub. So, So, seeing as we are on the moon now, I am going to end it there for today and go in search of food. So, head back to my menu. So, I will be back again on Tuesday with back to normal next Tuesday with Two Point Hospital again. But I'm going to continue with deliver us the moon on saturdays now but i will see you all there thanks for watching everybody i will see you all soon what we should do raid somebody i keep forgetting that i'm supposed to raid people at the end what should we look for or is there anybody i know online who do we know Or has anybody got any suggestions on who we could raid? Um, let's have a look for horror games, shall we? Yeah, I'm not seeing many people online. Oh, this game looks good. So, we'll raid somebody playing In Silence. It's like a, a multiplayer game, like a Dead Light by Daylight thing, but the... The monster can only hear. Like it can't see anything and it finds its way around by trying to listen out for stuff the players do or find somebody playing that let's have a look here yeah Let's go and say hello to this person. Playing silence, see how well they do with scary monsters. And I will see you all soon. Thank you everybody.